problem number two, reductio ad absurdum, from comparable cases of animals, race, height, age, weight, and disease. If one did not see the patent absurdity in disregarding biology when determining who is a he or a she, or who is a man or a woman, Perhaps it would be clearer if the same principle were applied in other areas. A white man could say that he is black, or a black man say that he is Korean, and doing so would be no different, and no less absurd, than saying that a man is a woman. A short child would be able to say that he really does have the minimum height necessary to ride the roller coaster, even though plain observation shows that he is nowhere close to it. A person might identify as a cat, and a child identify as a frog, and they would have just as much claim to being a cat or a frog as a man claiming to be a woman. A diabetic with an A1C of 9% might claim that it is 5% and that he is not a diabetic in order to avoid the increased insurance premiums, and the insurer would not have any more reason to take a man's claim that he is a female more seriously than it would the diabetic's claim. A morbidly obese man might claim that his weight is hundreds of pounds less than it is for the same purpose, and for him it will likewise be true that his claim has no less reason to be treated as true than the claim that a woman is a man. The person infected with AIDS or some other sexually transmitted disease might object that he should not be prosecuted for the crime of infecting a sexual partner whom he did not inform of his disease since at the time he identified as disease-free. If he did not have the disease, he of course was not able to pass it on to someone else. All such claims would be plainly false and insane if offered in genuine earnestness, and evil if offered in full knowledge that the person was not what he claimed it to be, and yet meant to impose his falsehood on the speech of others. But all those claims also have as much warrant to be taken seriously as a man claiming to be a woman. If we must accept that man's claim, we should accept these other claims, too, which would be ludicrous. Some add to this reductio ad absurdum the idea of identifying as an age different than one's real age. A 20-year-old might identify as a 70-year-old in order to get a senior citizen discount. Or the 50-year-old pedophile identifies as a 16-year-old in order to avoid criminal charges for his pedophilia. If a man can call himself a woman and everyone must treat him as a woman, then these absurd claims of a 20-year-old being 70 and the 50-year-old being 16 have just as much warrant as the claim of a man being a woman. So if we accept the claim of a man being a woman, we should also accept these other absurd claims about age. But we don't accept these other absurd claims, and so we should not accept the claim of a man being a woman. These clear cases work because we can tell, simply by examining the 50-year-old's body, that he is not 16, and by examining the body of the 20-year-old, that he is not 70. In these clear cases, as in the case of males versus females, and of snakes versus humans, Biology easily gives us the answer. But there are other cases in which the disparity is not so clear. And in those cases, unlike the case of whether someone is a man or a woman, or snake or human, no amount of biological examination will give us a definitive answer. If the contrast were not between 20 and 70, but rather whether someone was 34, 35, or 36 years old, biology will not help us. There is nothing in our cells or bodies that we can look at that tells us exactly how old is one of those cells or the body of which it is part. No amount of looking at someone's bodily characteristics is going to tell me that someone is 35 rather than 34 or 36. In contrast, we can interact with someone and to look at their biological characteristics and to know that they are man or woman. This is where the two cases are not sufficiently similar. If someone claims to be a certain age, what we check is not their biology, but historical record or records and a testimony. What does it say on the person's birth certificate? What does the mom say about when the person in question was born? If all the relevant historical birth documents were destroyed and the relevant testimonial evidence were lost, the mother and father who were there at the birth died, the person in question lost his memory, etc., we would not be able to answer the question of a specific age. However, it still remains true that while looking at someone might not permit us to make a fine distinctions in age, 34 verse 35 verse 36, it would permit us to make judgments about bigger gaps in age. Someone who is 70 is obviously not 13. The situation here is similar to that of the Sorites paradox, where one can clearly tell just by looking that a couple grains of sand is not a heap or pile, and then a million grains of sand is a pile or heap, but can't tell at exactly what point it crosses from being a heap or pile to not being a heap 
or pile. Thank you for listening. Credible Faith is a global missions-minded apologetics ministry with content available in seven different languages across seven websites, German, Russian, Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. If you would like to support the global apologetics work of Credible Faith, go to CredibleFaith.org and click on the Donate icon. If you would like me to give an apologetics workshop or participate in a debate at your university, or if you would like me to give a Great Commission Missions Conference or Apologetics Conference at your church, get in touch with me through the Contact Us section of the Credible Faith website. You can also submit a request through the website to get Credible Faith's monthly email. If you are a native speaker of Russian, German, Italian, French, Spanish, or Portuguese, and if you notice that an essay from the English website is not available on the Credible Faith website for your language, feel free to get in touch with me about translating the essay, and I would read through your translated material for quality control and the desire to see content from the essay made available in your language. Thank you for listening, and have a great night.